Amen. Anybody got a praise they holding on to? Just holding on to it until, until they see Jesus. Amen. I'm talking about that praise you didn't tell anybody about. Come on, Pastor. Ah, you're glad you got delivered from, but you didn't let anybody know. You're waiting, just holding on until you see his face. Give him that praise. Hallelujah. Can't praise him like I want to down here. But I got a praise that's waiting on Jesus. And when I see him for myself. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise uh -huh. Amen. 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 Listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold you long. As I said, uh, we got some things to do this afternoon and uh, some things that we don't want to miss, but I do want to give you a word from the Lord. Is that all right? Amen. All right. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Amen. Listen. I just uh, want to give you a few verses of scripture tonight. You know, it's a, it's, it's a thing I, I love uh, to uh, to teach and to uh, get involved in the Sunday school and everything. But the thing about it is, once I finish looking over the Sunday school lesson, I can't think about anything but that. <laughs> so then I have to preach <laughs> from the Sunday school lesson. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I just want you to investigate a few verses of Scripture for me. Amen? Uh -huh. Amen. Our first Scripture this morning will come from the uh, letter to the Corinthians, the first letter to the Corinthian church, and that's 1 Corinthians 15. Uh-huh. And verse 57 through 58. And it reads like this. But thanks be to God, which gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. And then I'm just going to investigate the, the letter of, of John, 1 John, verse uh, chapter 5, verse 4 through 5. And it reads, For what Ever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. All right. All right. And then lastly, from our scripture that was read in your hearing earlier, I just want to pick up the... 21st chapter of Revelations and the 7th verse and it reads he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son he who overcomes shall inherit all things I just want to preach just for a little while today on this communion Sunday he that overcomes. Is that simple enough? Yep. He that overcomes. Pray with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Right now I ask that you continue to dwell in this place in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, move among your people and have thine own way. Lord, open the hearts and the minds of this waiting congregation that they might hear the word that you have deposited in your servant's yes. spirit. Lord, today I ask that you would bless somebody's soul, that you would cleanse and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 You know, one of the things that make sporting events, uh, uh, gambling halls rich, and uh, all types of of, of wagering and what 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 really fuels places like Las Vegas is the uncertainty of the outcome of 
the events. Am I right? Uh, because, see, the thing that attracts us to the lottery and the thing that attracts us to games of chance is that anybody can win. Anybody can come out the victor. I heard somebody say, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Yogi Berra said, it ain't over until it's over. You don't know who's going to win until one is victorious. But you know what? I would sure like to be the one to know before the thing is over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How it was going to turn out. Yes. Amen? Yes. I would sure like to know and be guaranteed to know the winner of the games and the winner of uh, uh, the winning lottery number. I would glad. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Yeah. I know they might start getting suspicious after a while. Amen. Because I'd I, I be winning all the time if I, if I could just know the winner uh, of the events and the outcome of all these things. But suppose, just suppose, suppose you knew in advance that the Cubs were going to win the World Series. Well, I sure wouldn't have drove up in that truck of mine today. <laughs> I probably would have drove in up uh, up in something a little bit more shiny. <laughs> Amen? And a bit more expensive. Suppose you knew who was going to the Super Bowl this year. Right. And not only that, well, I know. I already know. But <laughs> I already know. <laughs> who going to the Super Bowl? And not only that, but who was going to win? Man, oh man, you know, T, that, that BMW we talked about? <laughs> that wouldn't be no problem, amen? If you just knew how it was going to turn out. What about Wimbledon? What about the Indianapolis 500? Mm -hmm. uh, suppose you knew, without a doubt, the name of the next president mm. of well, the United States. Well, well. You know, if, if you had knowledge like that, man, that would be great. Yeah. It would be valuable. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. It'd make you wealthy. <laughs> Amen? You know, there, there are a lot of people, though, that try to do this, but in unscrupulous ways. Uh, there, there are a lot of people who try to enrich themselves by fixing the outcome of certain things. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, you might not know who was going to win the fight, but you're going to try to fix it. Amen? Right. Mm -hmm. And you're going you're gonna to try to bribe some players to throw a couple mm -hmm. plays. And All right. You might want to bribe a, a, a boxer to just lay down even though you didn't really get hit that hard. Amen? Mm -hmm. You want them to throw the fight. And, and you know there they've even been political candidates that have been convinced to drop out of the race mm -hmm. so that that the race wouldn't be divided and and that the votes wouldn't be divided and and and, and that one certain person could have the advantage mm -hmm. and eliminate you know the risk of losing right. and, and and you know some people they take their whole fortunes everything they have on the outcome of certain events and when they get assured that the fix is in, they go all in. <laughs> if I knew that the fix was in, well, I'd put everything I had on the team that was supposed to be fixed to win. Mm -hmm. and, and, and don't get me wrong, now, fixing the outcome is illegal. It might sound like a good idea at the time, but... But it is illegal unless, of course, the one that's doing the fixing is God. My goodness. Uh, yes. When God fixes things up for you in advance, there's no uh, illegality uh, associated with it. And, and, and those of us in here that, that, that confess and believe and trust in God, you know what? You live in a fixed life. Your life is fixed. Your future is secure. The outcome of the Christian life is already fixed. It's already determined. It's already laid out. And I already know what the end is going to be. Mm -hmm. Without a shadow of a doubt, I know where I'm going to be. Without a shadow of a doubt, I know where I'm going to end up. You know, when, when, when Henry Aaron, they called him Hank. They called him Hank Aaron. You know, when he got up there and he stood up at the back, 
and he was poised to break a, a Babe Ruth's uh, uh, a home run record. I know he had butterflies in his stomach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't know how it was going to go. And he got up there and he positioned himself and he got ready to hit that ball and the pitch went out and Hank hit that ball mm -hmm. and it went all the way out the field mm -hmm. and into the stands. Mm -hmm. Anybody? I don't know. Some of y'all might have been there. but uh, <laughs> I, I saw it on TV. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> He made that swing, man, and, and, and powerful, knocked the ball off the playing field, and everybody knew, everybody at home and everybody at home listening on the radio, uh -huh. and everybody in the, in the stadium knew what the deal was. They knew it was going to be a home run. Amen? Yeah, amen. But, 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 but the, the scoreboard didn't change. The scoreboard didn't change because Hank still had to run the bases. He ran around the bases, first base, second base, yes. third base, and then he hit home base. Pick up. The scoreboard changed. Excuse me, everybody already knew. But when he touched home, that's when the store the scoreboard changed. That's when he broke Babe Ruth's home run record. The victory had been won. Amen. That's how it is with us. Amen. Amen. I already know. That I have the victory. All right. All right. I already know because Christ batted for me on Calvary. Right. He knocked it out of the park for my sake. Amen. The home run, though, won't be counted until I run my bases. Mm -hmm. One by one. And I finally touched the home plate. Somebody know what I'm talking about now. Right. I'm going to get home one day, but I, I got to touch home plate. Before I get credit. You know, I, I, I know what the end's going to be. All right. Those of you that have been with the Lord for a while, you know what the end's going to be. Yes. And because you know what the end's going to be, you ought to be encouraged just like me. Yes. I'm encouraged. I, I know that I'm going to be steadfast. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I know that my labor is not in vain. I know that I've got a reward waiting for me. I already had the victory because Jesus ensured it with his life. Mm -hmm. Not only his life, but his death mm -hmm. and with his resurrection. I'm all right. All I got to do is run my bases. Right. Somebody ought to help me in here. You know, I gave you a few texts today, and, and I just want to uh, give you a little rundown on them so you'll know what, what they're talking about. It's three passages of Scripture, and they, they, they each tell you three things. One is that the victory is assured. Mm -hmm. And then it describes who's going to get the victory. And then they tell us what they're going to receive as a reward for the victory. The first one in Corinthians, Paul told the believers that everybody has a right to expect victory over the enemy and over all of their foes. All right. All right. Now, now, this was written, believe it or not, in the context of persecution. Mm -hmm. Christians were being beaten. Christians were being killed. There were suffering losses of freedom. They were being thrown in jail. Their property was being taken. And a lot of them even got, got lost their lives. And a lot of them started to worry about whether their sacrifices were in vain. Were they going to receive a reward for what they were sacrificed? Many of us are the same way. You know, some of us have given up doing certain things. We've given up with hanging certain places. We've given up with, 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 with doing some things that actually felt good. Amen? Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but they weren't good. Amen? And, and, and sometimes you wonder if it's all in vain. So over and over again, Paul reminded them folk that no obstacle that you can come in contact with will stop you from getting the victory that God has in store for you. You're ensured victory because of what Christ did, not because of what you did. Y'all better hear me today. It's because of his death and his resurrection that you're going to have victory. You know, the, the, in Rome, the, the believers in Rome, they were concerned about the same thing. And Paul told them, like he's telling us today, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall peril, shall the sword, as it is written for 
thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nah, 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 nah. It doesn't say that. That's me. Nah, nah. It says nay, but that's what it means. Nah, nah, nah. In all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. No, no, no. It ain't going to be. Amen? Amen. He talked to the Corinthians to continue to doing the work of the Lord with the full knowledge that their labor is not in vain. But you're going to be rewarded when Christ returns. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody in here is worried about a reward. Amen. But I'm telling you, it is written. That will be enough for you right there. Amen. It is written. Mm. Then we had John. And, and, and St. John, when he wrote his letter, his epistle, he identifies some people that are guaranteed victory. Now, generally, these individuals are, as he said, born of God. Y'all hang with me? I'm trying to teach you a little bit. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You're going to be victorious, in other words, if you're born of God. Mm -hmm. And to be born of God is to have that mysterious rebirth that Christ told Nicodemus about and he couldn't understand. It's called being born again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And according to John, if you're born again into the kingdom of God by faith in Jesus Christ, then you are guaranteed victory. Mm -hmm. Then we went over to Revelation. And you know, after the tribulation and the judgment, John saw a reward for all of us that believe. Right. Are, are y'all with me? Right. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm not going too deep for you, am I? No, come on. And Jesus opened this thing up. And he revealed to him these events of the last seven years of this world called the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And he showed him also the events of what we call the millennium. And that's the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ when this world is over. And, and beyond that though, John saw what we would eventually receive as a reward. John saw us, as he said, inheriting all things. Uh -huh. well, I, well, you know, I don't just want no shaky promises. Okay. You know, that's like when Job would say, hey, listen, man, let me hold that, man. I'm going to hook you up the next time I see you. I don't, I, no, no. What are you going to give me? I want to know what I'm going to get. And when you go to a job and you work, they, they hire you, they say you're hired. Just go to work. I'm going to take care of you. No, you don't want, no, no. You want to know, am I going to get this much or, or that much? Amen? Well, 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 John simply said that those who uh, 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 believe and are children of God shall inherit all things. Well, what does that include? Well, I have, you have to go back in the Bible a little bit because Paul writing to Corinthians, he described these things that would be suitable for you. And you just have to take God's word for it. And I think if anybody is worth taking their word for it, it's God. But what he said he would do, he said, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, that's what you're going to get. Amen. Philippians 4 and 8, John saw the believers triumph in sharing every good thing that's in heaven. Now, now since his vision was about the future, the outcome has already been planned. If God knows the outcome and he's showing us something that's going to happen in the future, All then right. he already knows how it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. right. And that plan is just waiting for us to get up there and claim it. <laughs> now, when you put these scriptures together, it suggests uh, uh, to me that in his kingdom, it's going to be a victorious end for all of us. In other words, we're going to win. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody excited about that? Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> Those that believe and trust in him will overcome. Yeah. I don't care what you go through down here. I don't care what difficulties you have. You're going to overcome. Yeah. And when you overcome, the reward is already there for you over in glory. Ain't that nice? Yeah. Well, you know what? What I want you to know today and what I receive from this scripture and, and what makes me feel confident today is that the fix is in. Oh. <laughs> the fix is already in. <laughs> 
Now, 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 I don't know about you, but I'm seeing all kind of evil things. I'm seeing all kind of social evils in the world, and, and it makes me a little uneasy. I get a little overwhelmed sometimes by the weight of the problems of uh, innocent people being shot in the street by those that are supposed to protect them. Amen. Crazy people running for president and people actually voting for them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. It's easy, I'm telling you, to just throw up your hands in defeat and say, you know what, I don't care. I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to do nothing. It don't make no difference. But let me tell you something. It seems like that because it seems like the problems are not lessening. It seems like they're increasing. Gang violence is not going down. It seems like more young people are being killed every day. Right. And when you're grounded in the word of God, you can get you can get disillusioned too. Amen. The events of, that, that are going on now in our times, man, have never been seen before. Amen. But you know what? You don't need to be disillusioned. Because at the same time, we know what the outcome is gonna be. Amen. Amen. I'm concerned about social conditions. And folk always say, you know, what you going to do? You the church, what you going to do about this? Well, what can you do? Amen. Christ told his disciples that there were going to be many problems in the future. But not to be dismayed. This is what he said. He wrote it down. He said, and you will hear wars and rumors of wars. All right. See that you're not troubled. For all these things must come, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Right. And there will be famines and pestilence and uh -huh. earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Mm -hmm. And that seems like it's pretty gloomy. Amen. Not something to be looking forward to. Mm -hmm. But you're sure when you learn that the fix is in. Because verse 13 says, but he who endures mm -hmm. until the end <laughs> shall be saved. So no matter how bad it looks, you got to be faithful and you got to endure because the final outcome is going to benefit you. Amen. Well, who's going to overcome? Because it doesn't seem like everybody is, can be a winner at one time. Am I right about it? Somebody's always got to be the victor. But let me tell you, who is the man that overcomes? Is it about longevity? I mean, because I've seen some old folk that in a horrible state. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All right. I've seen some folk that have lived a long time, but they're still not saved. Mm -hmm. I've seen some old folk that have lived a long time, but all they do is suffer. Mm -hmm. So living long is not, is not the crux of it. We think people are blessed because they live a long time. Mm -hmm. But living long and doing nothing is just rusting. On, That's not overcoming. Am I right about it? Amen. So, so, so when we talk about overcoming, what are we talking about? Overcoming is enduring service. I mean, despite adverse circumstances, they, you just keep on achieving your desired end. You keep on coming. You keep on working. You keep on doing. He that overcome doesn't just sit down and rust. All right. All right. But he works. Y'all better help me in here. All right. That's why Paul in the text says, be ye steadfast, mm -hmm. unmovable, always abounding in the work Amen. of the Lord. Right. You know, the things that discourage us is not always something outside of your circumstances. Mm -hmm. You think that everything that discourages, sometimes everything that discourages is not outside. Sometimes the things that discourage you most is something that's happening in you. Mm-hmm. Or happening to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not crime. It's not violence. It's not hunger. It's not the poverty all around us in the world that discourages us. But sometimes it's just that we can't do anything about it. We can't do anything. And, and we're hurting emotionally and physically. And when you can't move like you want to move. Sometimes you can get discouraged. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever had a broken leg? And all your friends was going to the party, and you couldn't go, and you just sitting there watching Barney Miller or something on the TV. Yeah, it's discouraging. Am I right about it? Some folks don't know what I'm talking about. Barney Miller, y'all know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Remember it. Paul, he had the same problem. Paul was plagued by what he called a thorn in the flesh. 
And now people don't know, we don't know, scholars don't know whether this was some kind of physical thing or this constant evil that was around him. We don't know. They've been debating it for a while, but, but obviously it bothered him. And three times he asked God to remove it, and the answer was the same. My grace is sufficient for you. You know, we do not overcome if there is no struggle. Somebody don't want to hear that today. Mm -hmm. Somebody want to hear that if I come to Jesus, everything is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. If I work for Jesus, everything is going to be nice. And people are going to say nice things about me. <laughs> but if God moves every obstacle, then there's, then there's nothing to overcome. Mm -hmm. What are you overcoming if it's all easy for you? That's why, <coughs> excuse me, that's why we got so many spoiled kids. Yeah. Running out in the street. Mama and grandmama moved every obstacle out of their way. They never had to do nothing. They never had to wash their own underwear. They never had to cook their own food. They never had to work. They never had to do no chores. Mama took care of everything. And anytime somebody said something about them, they jumped on them. All right. Amen. All right, Leave my it. child alone. Your child is all disruptive in school, and you 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 come to their 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 aid when when they're supposed to be the ones being chastised. If there's no obstacle, there's nothing to overcome. Amen. Amen. And if you don't have anything to overcome, you become spoiled. You know the old times used to sing this song: "Lord, don't move my mountain, but give me the strength to climb." Amen. Amen. Some of us don't say that. We say, Lord, move my mountain. I don't feel like climbing. Please move my stumbling blocks. I don't feel like going around this stuff. Amen? But you know, I remember what Frederick Douglass, I'm almost done. I remember what Frederick Douglass said. He said, without struggle, there is no progress. He that wants progress without struggle wants rain without the thunder and the lightning. John said, a man or woman that overcomes believes in Christ and is committed to building the kingdom of God every day of his or her life. That's what an overcomer is. But you know what? Before I go out here and start climbing mountains, mm -hmm. before I go out here and start going around obstacles, before I go out here and start lifting things, I want to know what I'm going to get. That's what I want to tell you. Because you got to consider the reward of those who overcome. Yeah. And the final triumph of those whose work is constantly being undertaken in the vineyard of the Lord. Amen. You know, uh, old warriors used to sing, I believe I'll run on yeah. and see. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. Run on and see what the end will be. That's a familiar tune, but yeah. but 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 to me that's kind of like a misnomer because we who know the Lord already know what the end going to be. <laughs> I don't have to run on and see it. I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> and you may not know the day, and you may not know the hour, but I know what the end is going to be. You know what? I may not know the minute, and I may not know the second. But I know what the end is going to be. Yeah. I hear John saying in the Revelation, Revelation 2 and 11, he that overcomes shall not be hurt in the second death. Mm -hmm. We may not know the time of day, but we know what the end is going to be. <laughs> I hear him say in Revelation 2 and 26, and he that overcometh and keeps my work unto the end, to him I will give power over the nation. Yeah. You know, we may not know when it's coming. But we know what the end shall be. <laughs> Revelation 3 and 5. He that overcomes shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. You know what? I like that I will in there. Because that's the fuel of my Christian faith. The I wills of God. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many. You know.
know what, I'm going to run on. But don't be discouraged. Because Jesus said in John 14, I will not leave you comfortless. But I will come to you. Storms may rise. But he that overcomes are going to get everything. You know, one of these days, they used to say, by and by, it's going to all be over down here. But he that overcomes is going to keep on telling the story. He that overcomes is going to keep on telling the world about a place called Calvary. And one of these days, Jesus, who died on Golgotha's hill, and rose up three days with all power in his hand is going to come back again and I just want to hear him say well done my good and faithful sir I want to feel put his hand on my shoulder and say well done boy you've been faithful over a few things well done come on up Make you ruler of many. Servant, you've been working. Servant, you've been praying. Servant, you've overcome. Well done. Well done. Thank you, Lord, for being with me in the good times. Thank you, Lord, for being with me in the bad times. Well done. Run. Well done, no more pain. Well done, no more tears. Ain't hey, alright? I'm so glad. I know I'm on my way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on my way to a place called heaven. I'm telling you, don't you worry about it. Folk may talk about you. Folk may criticize you. Folk may say you're silly sitting up in that church. But the day's going to come when every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. And when we all get together, what a time. See him again. I can't wait to see my old grandmother tell her how I made it over. I can't wait to see my little son and hold him one more time. I'm so glad I already know where I'm going. Yeah. 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 I know the Lord yes, sir. will make a way. Oh, yeah. Yes, He will. Oh, yes, he will. Outcome in your favor. 
If you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sin, now is your time. I've got a couple gentlemen up here and they would be glad to receive you into the kingdom of God. All you've got to do is just step out on faith. And the reward is waiting for you. It's already fixed. Is there one today that says, you know what, I'm going to change this thing. I'm going to make this thing come out different. Why don't you come? It doesn't matter what situation you're in. You come by letter. You can come by Christian experience. You can come as a candidate for baptism. This is your opportunity. Oh, yeah. I know the Lord. Yes, he will. I know the Lord. will make a way. Yes, he will.